All right, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy here to give you guys a review for Married to Math since season five, episode three, called Let's Throw a Fit Me. So, we uh, have Contessa. She uh, served in the Navy, served five years as a flight surgeon. She's currently a physician. I ain't gonna talk too much. All I'm gonna say is this. I'm not gonna say she ain't been through the trenches, but she was an officer that's all I'm gonna say that's all I ain't gonna say no more than that for those who have served in the military you know what I'm implying you know what I'm getting at moving forward <laughs> you have Contessa talking with Toya Allura and Heavily talking they're pretty much all talking about that same one incident at um, Toya's party I really don't give a fuck about it cause it's fucking stupid it's foolish but, of course, you can tell that Toya is assisting in trying to create a fucking situation. I'm looking up because it actually is snowing right now, which is pretty kill. Cool. Hopefully, this shit don't stick. <laughs> All right, so, Quab, we have her with her husband. Long story short, she feels underappreciated in her marriage, which is something that she said. So, and that's going to play a role, and I'm pretty sure we're actually going to see that develop a little bit more next episode. Jackie is throwing a Fitney event. Fitney is fit is the new it. Uh, she's in her office with her two assistants, and we see that Curtis has been sending her gifts every day. And in a flashback of three nights ago with her talking to Dr. Simone, she says that she's upset that she missed all the signs. I'm, pro I'm not going to say that she missed it, because a lot of times people speak, you know, mean what they say, and just sometimes it's just... I'm pretty sure what she probably wanted to say, but she probably was right and not right, but she probably meant it. But I think more or less she was oblivious to the obvious. And that's a lot of people in relationship where shit, the stuff, like everything is written on the walls. Like you can fucking see this shit clear as day, but for whatever reason, you're blinded by something else. So I think that she was just being oblivious to the obvious. And now it's just like, boom, it's right here in her face. Uh, Michael, uh, Simone is with her son, Michael. They uh, go to get um, some yogurt and uh, actually talk about the text message that he sent her, which he discussed last episode. And he says that he liked his ice cream like he liked his women, vanilla. And she brings up chocolate, and he has said he has settled. I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. Everybody has their preferences. It could be him seeing how his mother and father interact that is spearheading this decision. But I ain't going to say no more. All I'm going to say is this. I think that probably should not have been on camera because Dr. Simone will get taken through the ring for that shit. But Michael pretty much says that he's the emotional out of the two and that when he would see them argue, he would cry. And in them seeing him cry, they pretty much saw that um, what they argued, what they were arguing about was petty and insignificant. And what is like the real focus of what they should be focused on is their children. And she was like, oh, so you were being manipulative. He was like, hey, anything for you to get the fucking point. But that right there shows that a lot of the arguments have not been closed doors or children over here and we arguing, doing the shit right in front of the kids. And I can say that that is going to play a part in both their son's relationships because apparently for them, that's going to be, you know, what the normal, what the norm is. And more often than not, most of the time we tend to date our parents so they may end up dating like their mother or in Michael's case he might be trying to date the opposite take that how you want but there's a good chance that the children may end up being like Dr. Cecil in essence kind of shutting down moving on uh, we have Contessa ain't nothing much really to say about seeing her again except for her nanny is uh, Miss Renee who is uh, Donnell Jones's mother and you can tell that, you know, she don't take no shit. Like, I might be on the payroll, but I'm going to sit here and I'm going to tell you about yourself. So I, so she the real, <laughs> like, in this reality. So I think I'm going to like her. So Toys with her daddy. She is uh, talking intimacy with him. I don't give a fuck. I ain't going to talk about it. Look, I'm close with my moms. I love her dearly. 
I ain't talking about shit intimate with my mama. Okay, these are conversations, conversations we don't need to have. Shit, I don't even know about her sex life and relationship. She don't even know about mine. Okay, mm-mm, mm-mm. That, 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 no, nope, nope. But anyway, <laughs> she talks about her father cheating, and he pretty much says that he didn't cheat. He just went and uh, got comfort somewhere else since that's what he was, since he wasn't getting that. But says towards the end of the conversation that with him uh, seeking comfort, that is when they were separated. I don't know if that's true, but she did say that she assisted him in his cheating. Meaning that if another if a girl was coming over, she had to swap out um, pictures and whatnot. So again, as I stated that since her father cheated, she might. I'm just saying, hey, sometimes you get the shit honest. I'm just move on. <laughs> so Donna Simone and Quad meet up. Simone, well, uh, Quad was talking about how uh, they won. Well, her team, well, yeah, their team won. No, no, no. Simone's on those teams. So her team won the uh, competition. And she pretty much, you know, giving big ups to Dr. Cecil. Well, not Dr. Cecil, but Cecil. And Donna Simone pretty much said to her, well, Cecil. Uh, has this image with you ladies pretty much just saying that he shows you who the fuck he wants y'all to see but they ain't the real him is what she was trying to say and Quad mentions that based off what it is that she's saying okay I take it that he doesn't listen which if y'all heard what I said in the last review they they have an issue communicating and Quad even goes so far as to say that she has issues in her uh, marriage where she feels that once she's unappreciated, but also that <clears throat> Dr. Greg tends to throw things back in her face, like the mortgage, and she even tried to, you know, give him a check to, for, you know, the next year, and he said, no, he didn't want it. So she feels like he wants to hold shit over her head. And I'm going to be honest, I don't like motherfuckers like that. Like, I'm the kind of person where I'm, I'm stubborn as fuck. So, and I don't, like to ask for help i don't like a fucking handout like i don't mind giving because <laughs> i mean i i it's just what i do i give but i don't like to receive i can recall one time i was in korea because in korea you know i wasn't able to have a car so i think it was raining this one day it might have been raining or snowing somebody that i didn't fuck with at the time pulled up was like you need a ride now nah, i'm good you sure yeah i'm i'm, I'm positive no a damn way <laughs> I could use that ride, but what you not finna do is sit here and be like, oh, well, remember that day when I, mm mm, mm mm, hell to the doll, we ain't doing that. So I kind of get what she was going with that. And again, her and Dr. Greg will have a blow up on the next episode, so we'll see how that plays out. So now was the Fitney event. Now, Dr. Heavenly had me laughing. You know how people got the, you know, your, your mama jokes, your mama so this, your mama so that. Well, Dr. Heavily had the toy your ass so big jokes that I'm saying like she ain't got no damn sense, no coof, no nothing. Now, Dr. Heavily wanted to talk to Toya, but she said that she wanted to wait until after everything was done to have the conversation because of what happened all the other times. And we saw the, the infants and Miss Jackie kicking their ass out like, get the hell out. I was like, come on, Jackie. So she waits until after the activities were done. Not necessarily until after the entire event was done. So they start talking and <clears throat> just to kind of sum this up as quickly as I can, because there really ain't a whole lot there, is that she, Dr. Heavily, felt that Toya brought over Contessa, who she calls Contessa, Contessa, but it's more or less Contessa, but brought over Contessa pretty much to stir up the bullshit. So she was trying to figure out, like, why did you do it? And they going back and forth, and she calls Toya messy. She was like, well, if I'm messy, why are you friends with me? She was like, well, I'm trying to change. Things get heated, so then Dr. Heavenly decides, you know what, I'm done with this. She gets up. I think Toya brings in Contessa, and what is so crazy is that Dr. Heavenly was going off, but Contessa did the adult thing and pretty much took the situation and was just like, you know what, it's probably my fault. Maybe, just maybe. I misinterpreted everything, da da da, and the reality is she actually did. But that right, I ain't even, I ain't finna go too far with that. But that's all the fuck that was. So I guess they're good now. Cecil and Simone, they um, 
have a uh, FaceTime uh, counseling session with Dr. Ken, <clears throat> who's in D.C., so that's why they actually did a FaceTime instead of actually meeting with him. And I think it was Dr. Cease who mentioned that they were going to church. They had a falling out with their son in the back, so I'm assuming that's Michael. And that's when she threw out the word divorce. And I'm going to say this. I give, like, sometimes you got to be careful about, you know, what the fuck you do, what the fuck you say, and what the fuck you throw out there. You got to be careful about that shit. Why I say that? Think about Escape. During they uh, just kicking it, I watch it, just not reviewing it, where, you know, they pretty much gave her uh, leaving uh, the member's contract or thing to fucking sign like you don't want to be in a group because they thought that that would like shock her and catapult her back into the group and she was like okay well fuck y'all sign that shit of paper she was at the motherfucking group you know so it's just like don't don't sit here and give ultimatums to motherfuckers if you're not ready for what's going to come like don't sit here and throw out divorce if you ain't ready for because what would happen if he's like you know what fuck it let's get a divorce her face would have broken she would have had an egg on her face so mm -mm, don't do that and he mentions that she's been bringing up a 15 year old mistake now she says that when he if he makes a little mistake he says i never did none that's when she does it but that leads like the question is what was that 15 year old mistake that's the question like though i and the only reason i ask is that the fact that it was brought up it must have been something significant like bro i hope you ain't cheat man so she's upset because she says he doesn't say I love you and the doc even says that when she speaks he seems a little irritated disconnected that whole type of thing and she says that she feels he doesn't appreciate her hard work and Dr. Ken says <clears throat> you guys don't listen to each other and they both agree yet again going back to what I was saying that those two have a communication problem so that's it that's the episode that's all I got Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And uh, I guess what I'm doing next. <sighs> Fuck it, let me get the households out the way. Because like, y'all think these reviews are short. Those reviews are going to be super short. And my love of hip-hop reviews are probably going to be in between how short that is and how short this is. So I'll see y'all then. Peace.